What is up and welcome back. We have a knife here and it's actually kind of funny. I was just about to start this video. <clears throat> I've been away on vacation for four days, five days. I haven't recorded a video in like almost a week and I've been watching a bunch on vacation here and there and I go to, that is just a bug out mini right there by the way, the uh, Demco is in the other room <clears throat> because of the vacation, didn't want to get uh, taken away on the plane. But I started to like forget what I used to say to start up the videos. That was kind of funny. I was, I just watched, I think most recently, a lefty EDC video. <laughs> Lo and behold, what do we have here? And I was going about to say, what's up guys? And I was like, wait a minute, that's not what I say. <laughs> that's what lefty says. Oh, nice packaging here, by the way. White Mountain Knives hooked it up with the <laughs> single kernel. I guess that was all it took to uh, keep this... Devo Growler safe. Super stoked. Totally uh, pushing the timeline here while the kid's taking a nap. <clears throat> I was hoping to get this out like the day it arrived and came out. But as I mentioned, I've been on vacation and was not able to uh, get it out there to you as fast as I'd liked. But super stoked to have it out here today. Let me maybe give a little more room here. Let's get to it. This is an exciting one because the stout, I felt like one of the only drawbacks of it was the price. Super cool knife, but man, $289, $299, depending where you get it. Uh, that's a lot of money for a knife that's made in China. Uh, I guess I should have opened this with that. Sorry about that, Lefty uh, and team at Devo. So one of the first things I'll say is on that on the uh, stout, it came with a lot more packaging, a uh, nice leather case, everything, like a ton of extra hardware. This is truly a budget budget packaging. It's not terrible or anything. It keeps the knife safe, but um, this is definitely a different uh, uh, you know presentation. Not that presentation is like the super most important thing to me, but you get a lot more stuff with the other knife. So I can kind of see the price difference in that alone, let alone the materials and everything. So. There are three blade finishes available for this particular knife. This just came out of the mailbox. You'll see it's got a little bit of um, condensation on it here. So I'll be wiping it down as we go here. Um, but they're all the same. Uh, I believe they're almost exactly the same, where they're all the same on the micarta. Um, mine's a little dusty looking, actually. I don't know, maybe that's the style that it's supposed to come in, but I see one spot here that's like a little more clear and the rest of it's like a little whitish. Like it's got some dust on it or something. I don't know. Maybe that's just how it is. It feels great in hand. Um, anyways, the the handles are all the same. The blade finishes you can get in um, a satin with grind lines, which is what I went with. I've become a pretty big fan of this style. Now what I'll say is um, I like it when the grind lines up here are either non-existent or going this way um, with the knife blade length wise or horizontally, depending on how you're looking at it, I suppose. Um, and then the grind for the knife goes this way. So since it's all in the same direction, I think it's a, it makes a little less of an impression. I wish it, it is a little different. Like I don't know if you can quite see it. It's so reflective. It's a little hard to present here. You can see it is the finish is a little different up here. Also the, uh, Condensation isn't helping, is it? Um, but it's like in the 20s outside right now. Um, but it's a near mirror finish. It's pretty impressive uh, overall. Uh, they also had, I think it was a bead blasted finish and a um, like a black wash. <clears throat> and I was kind of torn. Uh, I tend to think for an EDC, which my channel focuses more on, I go here or with, I think it was a bead blast, was a stone wash. I think it's a bead blast is the other option. But I have to say that like, whatever this is, I think it's a, ooh, I think I just got like a major, I may, have, I may have been pushing, I think I was pushing on the lock there. I was like, oh, lock stick, but it was me. It was a lock finger. Um, I think this is a stone wash finish. It's not my favorite. Like the Demco I think is a lot nicer looking. It's not a huge difference. As you look at it, you're gonna probably be like, what is this guy talking about? They're almost exactly the same. I don't know if it's the knife, if it's the blade finish or what, but I think if this was satin just on the grind with a nice hollow grind, that would just put it over the top for me. For some reason, this blade shape, I think, just doesn't look great. 
with that uh, finish to me for some reason. I don't know if I can fully explain that, but different blade shapes look better or worse in different finishes, I find. Um, and vice versa, different finishes, you know, I think make a better impression in different form factors. So I love, love it on this, and I don't love, love it on that. It's fine, but it's not my favorite. Like I have a black wash version also, and I kind of like that one a little more, which is unusual for me. So anyways, let's get to the matter at hand. Five minutes in, and the guy's talking about other knives again. All right, let's take a look at it. So first impression was um, very, not quite drop shutty, but pretty damn good out of box. Um, the, the micarta is nice, and the size of the knife is really nice. I do find that when you're using... When you're doing a finger flick, and this knife can be rolled out, it can be thumb flicked out. Well, not not successfully by me, apparently. Some people have talked about the D10 on this. This D10 is fantastic. I don't know what anyone's concern was. I think it's more just the the size and the shape and everything. I don't. I, I think you know. I honestly don't love that hole. It's just a little too big and like weird. It's not very ergonomic. It's really good for a rollout. But most people want to be able to like flick their knife out. So I think that was probably, you know, they designed this knife in the vein of what they were interested in, um, you know, and didn't see in the market. But that's sort of a weird, it's sort of a weird combo to have a knife that's, you know, no thumb stud. If you had a thumb stud in that slot like that, that'd be fine. And um, it fingers, it, it uh, spidey flicks out fine if you get it right. Um, I think part of the problem is this is so low profile that the combination is kind of weird. Let's see how the centering is on this. It looks pretty darn centered there. Uh, no, it's a little off to the non-show side, just a tad. Not like a big deal, but might even be able to push it back over. No, it's definitely off to the non-show side a little bit. Um, it's just still a little cold in there. So I'm trying to take a look inside the scales and see if there's any milling out. It looks like there's like a little bit of milling out there. Sort of circular milling out, which is a little unusual. Maybe not unusual for some people, but for the knives that I've had, I haven't seen a lot of circles used for the milling in the inside. Um, but it certainly would be effective. Um, probably not as effective as squares because you can just take up more metal, more material with squares, right? Um, so I don't know what the thought was there. Um, it's a little squishy here, but I don't think it's enough that you would feel it, especially with it's, it's so big that, you know, you wouldn't really notice it. No jimping on the top. Um, and now that, uh, the condensation is kind of gone, it's starting to look pretty nice here. I do feel like there's a little inconsistency in the finish. Um, I don't know if it's, if there's something on there, maybe it's even coming off of my my towel here, to be honest, it's pretty dirty. But I feel like there's a little inconsistency in the in the finish there. You can kind of see like right over here. It's almost like a fake. I mean, it's a real grind line. Let's see, what is this, a flat, flat grind? Holy crap, it is really sharp. Let's do a quick little sharpness test. I've been playing around. I saw some guy do this, so I'm playing around with this one. <laughs> yeah, that is very sharp. So it's a really nice edge from the factory, I'll, I'll give it that. It is a full rounded belly, so it's actually a little hard to get a purchase on here. You have to hit it just right. Otherwise you knock it over because it's round. Let's hold the edge a little bit here. Wow, it is really, really sharp from the factory. That is a really nice edge. I'm afraid to do this near my finger on these little tiny pieces of paper. Let me show you. I mean, this is a really small piece of paper, right? And those are not sliced. Those are push. Push cuts. There's like maybe... Whoa. That is crazy sharp. 
that's one of the best factory edges. Like that's like a almost beyond like a spider co. I'm gonna double this up here. That's really impressive. So I'd say that's one of the highlights. Um, it's one of those ones where you, you love lefty, right? Because the guy's amazing. <laughs> you gotta love everything about him. So you wanna go ahead and like, just automatically like the knife, but I always try and keep it super honest on here. There's some things I would do differently. And of course, uh, it's easy to say when you don't actually have to do anything and you get to sit around on your ass and criticize other people's work <laughs> or tell, tell the world how you enjoy it or don't enjoy it. I try not to be like too much of a jerk or anything on here, but <clears throat> I would probably do more of a shark's foot. I mean, the whole point of this knife is to do this, but like for me, I'm more of a sheep's foot, shark's foot guy. Um, this is for what it is. It's very effective, right? But that's not like my favorite blade shape. The, the handle's fine. It's not like nothing to write home about. Um, it's a little, it feels a little narrow in the hand, so I'd probably go a little rounder. You know, it's a very flat, very flat, um, here. I've heard on the, uh, on the Devo Pony Stout, they're taking a little more of a rounded finish. I can't remember what the right term is off the top of my head. Um, contoured finish, maybe. Um... The action's actually quite good. It, you can see just as the video went off on it, broke in even just a little bit, and it's <laughs> pretty damn sweet. Remember, this is a $85 knife right now on White Mountain Knives. Um, so it's pretty impressive. As you can see, what would throw out a Demco, like the detent's good. It's not, again, oops. That would make a Demco come out right that's how hard I'm doing it um so the detent's good on there um let's see with this pocket clip probably probably people talked about the pocket clip it looks like it's probably got enough ramp to just slide right in it's not exactly a one-hander to be honest uh, I got a little thick on the pants here they're, they're not like super thick though and it's not going over um I think maybe once it broke in it might be okay but it's not a great pocket clip either it's both it, it, where, where I think it shines as a pocket clip is it's good in hand. Like it disappears pretty much. You don't feel it very much. Um, but where I think it is lacking is, first of all, it's not stylistically great. Like it's a really big knife and a really narrow pocket clip, which I just think proportionally is not ideal, candidly. Um, the... That's pretty sweet. The action's getting pretty damn good as it like kind of opens up and as I get used to it. And I caught part of a video where Lefty talked a little bit about <clears throat> how you deploy it. And I see where he's going with it, where you want to not just flick out, but kind of flick up on this. It's now it's starting to work pretty darn good for me. Um, so it's probably a little bit of that out of box blues going. Let's see if the centering changed at all. Yeah, it's just a little off on the centering. Um, and now that I'm handling a little bit, it looks like some of the, looked a little just bit dry. It seems like that's kind of fading off a little bit. So that's starting to look a little better on the handle, uh, on the micarta. So yeah, the pocket clip's just like not quite tall enough. It's very long. So it's just kind of weird. Like it's hard to get that thing over the pant leg, or the uh, pocket rather. See if I'm being a noodle here or if it's, yeah, no, it's really not great, just to be honest. Um, you know, I got a comparison right here with the bug out, which I think is one of the best pocket carry knives out there. And uh, you can really just see the size difference. It's so easy to get this one over the, over the pocket material. Not so much with this one. So what I'd probably do if you were going to carry this knife a lot would be pull this up and kind of bend it out in a way and make it a real light, you know, like give it, put a little pressure on there, just like that. You can always bend it back if you have to, but now it goes in fine. So 
that's probably not the most elegant way to do it, but I'm not going to take this all apart in the middle of this unboxing video. Like, I don't particularly want to have that, but I'd have it just barely touching there, so it'd be a really light, like it was really hard up against there, it was hard to get my finger under it even, and pull it out. So I think that would, uh, you know, you could you can play around with that. It's definitely just a little dinky though. I mean, obviously, coming from a guy named Lefty ADC, it's uh, ambi, ambidextrous. It's on bearings. Like I said, it's starting to really, the action's starting to get really nice. So you can hear that. I feel like what I'm hearing is, uh, I feel like I can almost hear the D detent ball on the satin finish a little bit. It's a really neat looking finish. Like I said, I wish uh, it was maybe like a little more matte up here or something so that the grind lines stood out a little more. Or the grind lines up here went the opposite direction. Would be really nice finishing touch. You don't have had to pay an extra 10 bucks or something to have that. That to me is like all the difference in the world on this knife. If I'm gonna go with the satin finish, you know, maybe just charge an extra 10 bucks for the satin one. For anyone that loves the grind line, but, but in a contrasty way. Um, if you're wondering what I'm talking about, I'm trying to see if I have an example out here or something like that. Uh, I don't think I do. Oh yeah, here we go. See on here I've got, you know, they kept the uh, stonewash finish up here and then you got the nice grind line. So it's very contrasty and just, it really makes the grind line pop. I and mean, granted those grind lines are also way on a different scale but yeah it's grown on me a little bit just since i've been playing with it and since it's been opening up a little bit um it's not like quite what i call guillotine drop shut but interesting little click Definitely more feedback at the top than at the bottom. Um, so yeah, I can kind of see why some people, I mean, this thing has a much more distinct detent. Like it's a lot more impressive and better drop shuddiness. Now I've had that one for a while. I actually didn't have that out of the factory, so maybe I would tune this a little bit. Uh, just, you know, unscrew it a little bit and mess around with the centering if possible as well. <sighs> what else? What's this thing away? Three point seven nine ounces. It's almost the same as its big brother there. The Devo Stout. It's an interesting knife. You know, it's a nice knife for the money. Like, rock solid. Pretty nice action. Yeah, the reverse flick's grown on me here. I don't even do a perfect reverse flick. Like, you could probably really fly it out of there if you had a lefty style reverse flick going on. Should we dare try the left? Hey, there you go. You saw it here first. Didn't cut my finger off. Um, <clears throat> let me get a little close up. You can see the bearings in there and the blade. Do my best to film this. It's very reflective, which makes it tricky. The edge is really something like that is impressive. Uh, 
Um, yeah, it's a good knife. Uh, what does it compete with? Hmm. Nothing in my collection. I don't really have, like, I don't know, it kind of reminds me, I was saying this in a post message, it reminds me of, like, a poor man's CFK Rotten or something like that, stylistically and, like, util from a utility perspective, the blade shape is not that different. Um... I don't know. Cool knife. Kind of like, like use it a little bit and see what I think. This to me is not like the best EDC style, having that big swoop belly um, because it kind of rolls off of stuff. But you know, if you're if you got the right use case for it, it's an interesting uh, edge, you know, shape for the right things. Um, and they put a freaking awesome edge on it, as I mentioned. So let's do one more of these. Just, I just got to show how sharp this is if I can. So let me see if I can free stand this little tiny piece of paper. If I can get the edge flat enough on there. The big problem is that edge is so round. <laughs> it makes it hard. But yeah, it's it's super duper sharp. Like these are really small pieces of paper with like minimal, you know, very minimal like weight behind them to like stop that. Let me show you a full size. I think this one deserves a little recognition. This is even a half size piece of paper. This thing deserves a little recognition here. That's, that's the user error there. Um, it's just a little dirty now. And that is really very, very sharp. Like it's not like a mirror, it's not quite a mirror finish rack and it's not supposed to be, it's got a little bit of bite in it, a little bit of toothiness. Let's see if I can get you a real nice shot of the edge here. I got some more stuff in the background that's gonna mess up the focus, but this is one of those ones that you catch yourself on and uh, you try not to do it twice after that. So you can see there's a little bit of grind line on the micro bevel there. It's not like it's like a mirror polish. So for it to be that slicey plus that, I mean, you can just tell that thing is wicked. Wicked shop. That boy's wicked shop. Name that movie. I think it's actually wicked smart. Yeah, it's a tough one to film just because of that blade is so reflective um, but it's a cool knife again I, I'd say this one's a little more niche like, I don't know that this is for everyone just because of the shape and the size and let's do some like quick size comparisons there's versus the Devo Stout Versus the Demco 8020.5. It's a pretty good size comparison. A little bigger than that. Da -da 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 -da. Let's do the classic here. So you're going to reverse flick out this wrap one here. Way, way bigger than the Growler and rat two, way smaller. A little more, a little further away here yet. Let's see if they can come as top down as possible on those to keep 
keep the proportions right. And then let's see, bug outs. Bug out full size, almost exactly the same. Obviously a lot taller this way. Bug out mini. I personally try to line these up like at the very end of the handle. So you can compare blade lengths and handle lengths. Um, we banter, much smaller knife than this. And actually an interesting one to compare to it is the Para 3 from Spyderco. Very similar in both blade and handle length, I would say. Um, just a very different shape on both. Um, I think this one feels much better in hand. Personally, it's much more ergonomic. This one is more flexible. Like you can grab it wherever you want. If you got big meaty paws, you'll probably feel like this is ergonomic for you. For me, with my skinnier fingers, not so much. Da -da -da -da. <clears throat> CGRB Pyrate. There's a smaller knife than it. And here's another good comparison. QSP Penguin. Penguin? Yes. Penguin. Wait. So kind of a similar, again, total length, but just this is a much taller knife. So yeah, it's an interesting knife. Um, like if a big, big brand made it, I would expect it to be like um, maybe a $65 knife. Obviously when you're only making, I think he said he put out 600 copies of the knife. 550 went to White Mountain Knives and 50 are going to be sold at different... Uh, blade show events and, you know, knife show events and stuff. Just so they have some inventory when they go to those events. Um, gosh, I feel like I should pull out like a micarta knife or something for this too. What do I have handy? <clears throat> I did pull out the QSB Penguin there. Let's see if I have anything else sitting around here. Micarta. Just got back from Delray Beach, Florida, so the mail had a... And when I have time off, man, I can do some damage on Blade Forums and on Facebook. So the mail is pretty full. This is the first one I opened. I was excited about this, like, just given... Uh, there we go, perfect. Cool. Comparison. Uh, which one I want here, actually, is the Ace Grand. This is a green micarta one here. This is a great comparison. Great comparison, because this one's been around for a while. This is actually a very similar knife in a lot of ways, and very different in others. Like, although they both are similar, you can see this one flattens out here. This one stays fairly curved. I mean, there's a little, almost a little flat spot at the end, but it's fairly curved for most of the knife. I do think I like this hole this deployment hole a little more and the contouring on the scales is a little nicer here it feels a little sweeter in hand um, I like the choil on this more and I like the edge on it more um, but this just is a very intuitive oops here I go slipping out of it but that's what happens when I try and look at the screen um, it's a very intuitive deployment hole um, Oops. that you pretty much get a consistent result out of because it tells your finger where to go. And, you know, Lefty said it himself, like the whole idea here was to give options. But I don't know that options are always the best. I guess it's flexible, but... So this is a smaller knife. It's somewhere between the Ace, the uh, Giant Mouse Ace Biblio and the Giant Mouse Ace Grand. Like it's a little shorter. Um, it's about the same height, though, if not taller. Take a quick look. It's actually taller. 
make it like by like here. Slightly taller, just slightly, like the very tip here before it dives down, they're similar. And again, this is like kind of a, I don't know if this is a stone wash. I think it might be a stone wash finish, but this is, I, I started just getting a little tired of it. Um, so I want the satin here. And there you go. Like once you switch back out of it and you get into a knife that lets you do whatever you want, you start missing it again. It takes like a little, like you have to be used to it almost a little bit. Um, so I could see with this size of a hole, the detent could be a little harder because like it makes you, it gives you so much power that you almost need like the detent to be a little harder to resist you. Otherwise you're gonna pull it out super easily because you get such big purchase on it. It's kind of funny, the, I think it's the grind lines make a little sound on the detent ball. Gotta keep my finger out of the way. I hope you can catch that through the camera. Um, but yeah, overall, you know, it's a good knife. It's not like, Everyone must go buy this because it's $85 and it's the best knife ever produced. It's not my favorite knife of the year or anything, um, but it's a good knife. So if you're looking for something like this, I'd say they did a pretty good job. Uh, I think we called out the, the concerns pretty clearly here. Um, takes a little adjustment period and a little break in, but man, once you do it, it's pretty damn good, especially for the price. Pretty sweet. And then, you know, the pocket clip, a little shortcoming there, I'd say. Benefits, of course, because of the design, but also some drawbacks. Like the first thing I noticed on the pocket clip is I went to do a reverse flick. And when you reverse, when I reverse flick, I don't do it like the right way. Some people say the way to reverse flick is in here. And then you have a ton of, you know, space. I personally have very stiff fingers and like, I don't feel like I can get my pointer finger out of the way to do that safely. So I don't really do it this way. Cause as you see, as I go to put my finger in, it pulls my pointer finger back. Call me an old man or whatever. I'm just not very flexible. So I don't really do this style finger flick, which would probably make it all work that much better. You know, if you did it, if you do a correct finger flick, now the detent feels strong. I do it this way and I grab the knife with my bottom fingers and I just move, and I grab the knife up here and I just moved this little finger and it looks funny. You probably noticed that on the videos, um, but it's very safe. Like I've never cut myself with this deployment. Um, whereas I've cut myself with almost every other deployment, maybe not a finger roll out like this, or maybe, I don't know, definitely a lot with the thumb studs and stuff. I just, you know, you end up like right in the path um, if it doesn't all go perfectly. So um, anyways, that, that, for whatever reason, just takes a little adjustment for me. Um, but now you can see I'm back on it and it's working great. If I go back to this one and then I switch back, let's see, eh, it's fine. You, I think, have the info you need, hopefully, to make a decision. Um, you just, I, I think one of the most important things to make this decision is do you want this blade shape? That's probably the most important factor in deciding whether or not to buy this knife, I'd say. Um, so yeah, hopefully uh, if you do, you enjoy it. If you don't, I could definitely understand why. Um, but there's just some honest opinion from a guy that bought it and was very interested in it and uh, excited for another knife from this cool company. What I will say about Devo is they're exciting to me. They're a little different than everyone else out there. Um, to have, you know, kind of what we'll call a knife critic start to produce it. Um, produce a knife is a, it's an interesting thing to have happen. And I'm sure it's happened before. Uh, in fact, we know uh, Ben Peterson, I think his name is, uh, did so with the Wee Banter. Um, and I think there's, you know, quite a few people that are kind of following in those footsteps. Um, and this is one of them. So I think from that perspective, it's a it's a knife that has my curiosity. It's a good group 
that's putting it together that I think will stand by their product and do right by their customers. And they're going to try and produce a product that really appeals to the market. And I think they did that really successfully here with the Devo Stout, but they needed something down market um, without just, you know, doing a poor man's Devo Stout. And I think they've done that here with the Growler. Um, and it's going to appeal to a set of folks. So uh, good job, guys, from that perspective. And um, you know, I think uh, for those of you watching, I appreciate you making it. If you made it to this point 35 minutes in, um, hopefully you found some value in the video. Please like, subscribe, and we will see you on the next one. Take care.